My practice is, is exclusively shoulder and elbow surgery. So most of my patients that I see have challenging problems like severe arthritis, um, rotator cuff disease or rotator cuff tears, um, and a lot of fractures about the shoulder and elbow. I'd say that encompasses the, way that the vast majority of what I do. And so as, as someone who the community looks to for complicated, challenging problems, I'm often faced with some of the most challenging forms of all of those. Fractures that nobody else thinks that they can handle, shoulder arthritis that has been present for so many years that has, has worn away in such a severe pattern, and even rotator cuff tears that most people think they can't fix, they get sent to me for a final opinion to see if I can fix him. The clearest example of a patient like that would be a patient with, with rotator cuff tear arthropathy. And what that basically is, someone who's had a rotator cuff tear that they had years ago, never had it treated, lived life through it, and gets, it gets so severe over the years that they physically can't lift their arm up. They have severe arthritis and the rotator cuff tear is so far torn it's no longer even repairable. And for, for years we didn't have a solution for that. And they would see, those patients would see doctors and doctors would say, listen, I'm sorry you're hurting, I know you're in pain, I know you can't lift your arm up, you can't get dressed, but I can't help you. And, and that has changed dramatically since the invent of the reverse shoulder replacement, which is certainly something that I have a, a, sort of a, a strong handle on. Uh, it's a research interest of mine. It is an area that I help um, develop on an industry level where I'm actually developing new implants and new shoulder replacement devices and I teach around the country on it. The basic concept is for a normal shoulder to work, it's a muscle balance. The shoulder is much like a golf ball sitting on a tee and it really relies on the muscles to keep that ball there. And if the rotator cuff muscles are gone or they're disturbed, then that ball can fall off the tee. The shoulder loses its stability because it can't stay centered. The deltoid muscle, which is the outer muscle, does most of the powering of what we do with shoulder function. It helps us to lift our arm. And what the reverse shoulder replacement does is it flips the ball in the socket. And what actually happens is when the deltoid muscle contracts, the socket is pushed up against the ball and rotates around the ball, no longer requiring a rotator cuff to function. So the, the shoulder can power itself without ever needing a rotator cuff. And that actually allows people to use their arm functionally above their shoulder level without ever having a, you know, if the rotator cuff's torn, it doesn't really matter you can actually regain function without that. So that's been a, it's, it's remarkable in concept in, in, a, in a mechanical, um, sort of a major advance in mechanics to understand just how that would work. How if you just flip the ball in the socket, how now all of a sudden your shoulder will work. But it's certainly not for everyone. In fact, if any day, if I could do a standard, regular shoulder replacement and replace a ball with a ball and a socket with a socket, I'd always rather do that. The only times I would think of using the reverse shoulder replacement are when a normal, re normal shoulder replacement just won't be successful. So those cases are really when the rotator cuff is missing or there's such instability of the shoulder that I can't restore that with a regular shoulder replacement. There's no question we are getting better at doing shoulder replacements. We have a new type of shoulder replacement, the reverse shoulder replacement to treat a unique subset of people. Um, but we're getting better at performing the surgery. Uh, we're getting better with better instrumentation to allow us to actually do it right. And then our, the implants that we're using, the sh actual shoulder replacement devices are, are getting better. There are new generations of actual devices that we use. Uh, and I think what that has led to us to accomplish is much better results, easier recoveries, and more consistent recoveries with outcomes that are far exceeding what we used to be able to do 10, 15 years ago.